This is the Branch Museum Chimney Restoration Project performed by Virginia Masonry Restoration. We will be taking you through some of the methods and protocols being implemented during this project. These chimneys were damaged when a large tree fell onto the chimney. The chimney capstones were dislodged and the impact of the tree created a structural crack that can be seen on the front and back sides of the chimney. In many cases, a structural fracture can be repaired by only resetting the bricks and repointing the mortar joints in a way that stitches the masonry on both sides of the crack back together. But these chimneys have a unique spiral design, which required the use of narrow headers to maintain the curve of the chimney. The use of these headers reduces the length of overlapped surfaces as each course of brick is laid above it. This, combined with the iconic and historic significance of these chimneys as part of the Richmond skyline, helped make the decision that their long-term preservation was better served with a full restoration. This video will showcase elements of the existing mortar removal, repointing, and resetting the precast chimney capstone. The removal of the existing mortar requires selective use of power tools, air chisels, and hand tools. The primary objective is to remove the mortar to a depth of at least two and a half times the width of the mortar joint. However, this process is controlled by the inviolate rule that the brick themselves are never scarred or damaged during this process. It is important to note that the surface of the brick within the joints must be completely clean and free of any dust or residual mortar. Successful repointing depends on the bonding of the mortar to the walls of the brick. The new mortar will be at the mercy of the daily expansion and contraction of the masonry, so it relies on full adhesion for the entire depth of the mortar joint. The old mortar is cut back to a squared surface within the joint to allow for full purchase of the new mortar on the brick. The structural performance of the repointed mortar joints will depend on balancing the moisture content between the masonry substrate and the mortar itself. It is important that the existing masonry is damp enough to prevent instant absorption of the moisture from the newly installed mortar because healthy curing of lime mortar chemically depends on water for a period of several days. The appearance of the repointed masonry will vary greatly, depending on how the joints are tooled. When doing restoration work, it's important to try and blend the repaired joints with the surrounding masonry. It is important to keep the mortar within the joint itself and to avoid smearing it on the face of the brick. It also helps to cut the mortar back on a slight angle to reveal approximately one eighth of an inch of the brick at the edges. This helps make the repaired joint to appear smaller because the edges of old brick are often rounded off due to weathering and if the mortar is brought fully flush to the face of the brick, the joints will appear larger than they were originally. Additionally, the 1 8 of an inch reveal creates a subtle shadow at the edges of the joint which helps make the repointed joint appear smaller. This is often done a day or two after the initial repointing because the cutting can be done without smearing the mortar. Alright, so what we want to do is take a fluffy ball of mortar, basically get it on here. It's a little bit different with the mortar. You kind of have this layer that is sticking like, yeah, like you know now that I can't just scrape this off without leaving behind that layer. This precast chimney cap was dislodged when the tree fell on the chimney. 
As seen in the video, there is more of the process than just spreading mortar and rebedding the stone. A bonding coat of mortar is applied to the top course of the brick and to the underside of the stone before the setting bed is installed. This creates a better bond between the cap and the masonry below. 